Donut Bag is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Your data is your business. Protect it with ExpressVPN for three extra months free with a one-year package. Go to the link listed in my Twitter profile. What's going on, everybody? We are continuing our ranking of every Seinfeld episode. We are on part nine. We're going to be doing numbers 39 to 25. We are getting so close to the end. Only two more episodes. Oh, my goodness. What a ride this has been. It's been it's been so much fun. I've been watching about 15 episodes a week and then uh, doing an episode on them. This has been so much fun. So let's get into 39 to 25. Number 39, the voice from season nine. Kramer sets up a new company, Kramerica Industries, and hires an intern to help out with the day-to-day running of his fake large company. Uh, George continues to work for play now, even though his boss is trying to force him out after George lied about being handicapped. Elaine makes wagers with Jerry that she will not continue to see David Putty. But the main thing to remember from this episode is hello. (laughs) Whether you like it or not, that's what this episode is known for. Um, Yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, One of the things that Seinfeld is good at is, being having having the characters be horrible to people and this one what they did to darren the intern basically they uh kramer and the intern drop a giant uh uh ball of of oil onto jerry's girlfriend and the cops come and the intern goes to jail for a long time and the girlfriend uh, sues the uh, play now and makes him go out of business. And it's just, just, I I don't know. This this is just what they do. You know, it's, it's, it's like, it's like when they killed Susan, they just do terrible things to people. I was not a fan of that, but this is what the episode will be known as for. Hello. Number 38, the hot tub. Wilhelm thinks George is cracking under the pressure of working in the big league. So he has George entertain a group of visiting baseball officials from the Houston Astros. And he gets a bad habit from them who calls everybody a bastard and a son of a bitch. Kramer buys a hot tub from his friend Lomez and installs it in his apartment. But what this episode is known for is Elaine and the marathon runner, Jean-Paul Jean-Paul. I love that name. Who was late to the Olymp- to the to the Olympics, and Jerry is trying to get him to be on time, and it's just it's 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 a great plot. Um, Jean Paul Jean Paul is one of the great one off characters in Seinfeld history. I I love him so much. They're so but the, but before that, George, the George thing is really good too. Uh, first of all, George says. Always look annoyed. When you look annoyed all the time, people think you're busy. This is very true. <laughs> try, 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 to, try this at work. Always look annoyed. Uh, but uh, also, uh, yeah, he meets with the with the Astros uh, guys, and they're they're all drinking and carrying on, and, and everybody's a bastard and a son of a bitch. Uh, but he tells the, the the one great line from this is he's he's. The Astros guys are calling him on the phone and George is yelling, you tell that son of a bitch, no Yankee is ever coming to Houston. Not as long as you bastards are running things. And George's boss is hearing this and is actually thinking that they're, they're turning down the Astros or something like that. It's, it's silly. It's funny because the Astros are now in the American league, but, uh, but, but Jean-Paul Jean-Paul is just, just about everything he said was so funny. That accent, uh, when when he when he first meets Jerry and Jerry wants to know what happened, why why was he late? And and uh the guy said it was a separate knob. There was a separate knob on the alarm clock. And and uh the guy says, Why separate knob? Why separate knob? And and uh Jerry says, Well, some people like to have the radio alarm a little a bit louder than the radio. And, the, and Jean Paul says, Oh please, man, please. So funny. Uh uh, but the, my, one of my favorite lines of the whole season of the whole series is when Kramer's hot tub breaks and he's cold and he's so cold 
that he can't get his court temperature back up. And he, and he comes into to monks and they're all sitting there and, and Kramer says, feel me. And, and Jean-Paul Jean-Marc is this, this son of a bitch is ice cold. So, oh, maybe my favorite line of the entire season. Um, yeah, yeah, he calls. And, and then Jean-Paul, Jean-Paul decides to call everybody a bastard and a son of a bitch. So funny. Just one of my favorites. Number 37, the movie from season four. Jerry is supposed to get together with Elaine Kramer and Georgia go to the movies, but he has two gigs at night. And in the process of moving them around, he misses both of them. Everybody misses each other. Uh, it's, it's, it's This is just one of those classic episodes that... You know, you could totally see this happening in real life. Uh, you know, the craziness that goes on in, in a movie. Um, I love, <laughs> there's a great line from, from Elaine. She says, you know, men can sit through the most boring movie if there's even the slightest possibility that a woman will take her top off. That's true. Uh, but the way he, the, the way they all describe each other is is so funny. It's like, if you see a guy that's five foot 11, he's got a big head and flared nostrils, tell him his friends got looking for him. Or uh, have, have you seen a guy with a horse face, big teeth and a, and a pointed nose? Um, but there was a short guy with glasses, looked like Humpty Dumpty with a melon head, but he left. And then I was like, how about a pretty woman? You know, kind of short, big wall of hair, face like a frying pan. So funny, so funny. There was also a bit with Elaine and the sizes of drinks. There's medium, large, and jumbo. And she said, well, what happened to small? There is no small. Small is medium. Well, what's medium? Medium is large and large is jumbo. That's that's so true. Oh, uh, the the comedian, uh, other comedian in this was Buckles. And he was, he is one of the most annoying characters in all of Seinfeld. Oh, I hated him so much. Telling Jerry he needed to the, 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 the store his coach or some stupid thing like that. Number 36, the gymnasts from season six. George's girlfriend's mom thinks he's a bum when she catches George eating an eclair out of the trash can. <laughs> uh, Jerry dates a woman who is a former Olympic gymnast, gymnast and ventures into the territory of sexual pleasures that most men dare not dream of. And Elaine tries to pry Mr. Pitt away from looking at Kramer's new 3D art poster and Kramer gets a kidney stone. Uh, yeah, this is this will be known for for George eating garbage <laughs> out of the top of the garbage can. Uh, uh, there's the, the exchange he has with uh, with Jerry is so funny. Um, he says, but it was in the cylinder above the rim. And, and Jerry says, adjacent to refuse is refuse. And, and George says, was still had the doily on. And, and Jerry says, was it eating? Was it eating? Well, one little bite. Well, then that's garbage. Um, I've never eaten garbage before. Okay, okay, maybe I have. But but still, it's whatever. Uh, but uh, the 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 date with the, the 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 relationship with the gymnast does not go well. And in the end. She says, in my country, they speak of a man so virile, so potent, that to spend a night with such a man is to enter a world of such sensual delights that most women dare not dream of. This man is known as the comedian. You may tell jokes, Mr. Jerry Seinfeld, but you are no comedian. Oh, boy. Um, also, this is, uh, yeah, Mr. Pitt gets carried away with the, with the 3D poster and the, um, the the merger with Mullen Springs or whatever is is almost off. But then uh, Mr. Pickett gets, gets ink on his face and he kind of looks like Hitler. And this, uh, it's a funny gag. Yeah. Number 35, the parking garage from season three. Having gone to a mall in Jersey so Kramer can buy a new air conditioner, George, Jerry, Elaine and Kramer find themselves unable to find their car when they're ready to go home. And yeah. This is this is another iconic episode. They're all in the parking garage. They get lost. This has happened to all of us. Uh, Jerry needs a pee. Elaine is worried about her fish. George needs to p- pick up his parents. Um, J- Jerry invents a, a disease called uromycetosis, poisoning. Uh, and um, uh, this is just it's just a great just a great episode just focusing on one issue and they're all together which is which is great um apparently they actually had my, my michael richards insisted on carrying an actual air conditioner to make it look more real 
but he, when he puts it into the car, he bangs his head really hard off the off the, um off the air the air conditioner off his head uh, when he puts it in the trunk, and and, and it, it actually hurt him. It actually he got a fat lip from it. Um, but at the end, they get in the car, they're ready to go. And the I think the original scene was they were supposed to get lost in the you know going around the parking garage, but the car would not start. So they just they just use that. They just use that. And if you look real closely, um, Jason Alexander just starts laughing like crazy. So that's 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 uh, just just a classic episode. Number thirty four, the package from season eight. Kramer tries to get a refund for Jerry's broken stereo. Um. Newman accuses Jerry of mail fraud when Uncle Leo signs for the package and an explosion is heard. George gets involved with photo store Sheila when she accidentally slips an enticing photo in George's pictures and George decides to send one back. And Elaine gets a rash and is barred from every doctor when she takes a peek at the medical charts. This is known for one thing. George almost naked posing like he did i'm sure you've seen it i just ordered the poster actually i'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get it for the, for the next episode uh it is it's it's classic the the uh the timeless art of seduction they called it uh there was also a great bit between kramer and jerry about what a write-off is and kramer just kept saying it's just a write-off for them uh, and they just write it off and jerry's like write off what he said, Jerry, these big companies, they write off everything. And Jerry says, you don't even know what a write-off is, do you? And Kramer says, no, I don't, but they do, and they're the ones writing it off. Okay, can't, can't argue with that logic. Uh, the thing with Elaine was stupid. She, they, 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 they said her medical chart says she was difficult, and she cut, tries to go to different doctors to get this rash taken care of, and she can't because she's labeled difficult. Uncle Leo gets involved and gets his his uh his his eyebrows uh, burned off and she she draws eyebrows on him and and, uh, and then the the, uh, the the doctor says I don't like your demeanor you're being difficult and, and Uncle Leo's like difficult demeanor that was that was pretty funny um, but yeah this is this is just a classic episode for one. Steam. One thing, George and, and the pose. Number 33, the dinner party from season five. En route to a dinner party, Jerry and Elaine stop off at a bakery to get and get held up when the bakery runs out of what they want to purchase. George and Kramer uh, stop off at a liquor store to buy a bottle of wine and have a hard time getting picking one out. This is the one where George wears the Gore-Tex <laughs> jacket. It's Gore-Tex! Love that they're, they're they're smacking him like crazy because he wears his giant puffy jackets. Uh, this is just the, they go they want to get chocolate babka, but they they're out of chocolate babka, so they get cinnamon babka, and Jerry goes crazy. But there's so cinnamon babka is not lesser anything. He says again and again lesser babka. I think not. And uh, also, this is the one where Jerry talks about the black and white cookie. And he says, you want to get the, some black and some white in each bite. Nothing mixes better than vanilla and chocolate. And yet somehow racial harmony eludes us. If people would only look to the cookie, all of our problems will be solved. Um, yeah, so so George and Kramer are in the, the wine store and they don't they can't break 100. So they buy some things. Then George knocks over the thing, but they're double parked because the guy looking just like Saddam Hussein double parked there. So uh, this is this is this is just another classic premise, classic episode. Number 32, the junior mint from season four. Elaine's ex-boyfriend is recovering in the hospital and has surgery, and the gang goes to visit. Kramer gets the idea to paint his apartment to stimulate the feel of a ski lodge. And this is also this is also the, the, the junior mint is another classic scene. Uh the the <laughs> Jerry and Kramer are there, and the junior mint goes flying into him. Uh yeah, and, and Oh, this is also the episode. Another classic, two classic things in this episode. This is the one with Mulva. 
This is the one where Jerry's dating uh, a woman. He doesn't know her name. And she says it rhymes with a female body part. And he's like, Celeste, Kest, Hest, Aretha, Bovary, Gipple, <laughs> Moliola. Uh, so classic. So classic. Uh, there is a great line uh, when they're, uh, they're deciding to go see the surgery. And, and I mean, I think, I think Jerry Seinfeld's a terrible actor and he, and he laughs through almost every single scene, but still, uh, this, this one line, he says, he says, all right, let me just finish my coffee. Then we'll go watch him slice his fat bastard up. I think that was an ad lib. And I think he just, <laughs> they were just about to lose it. Um, but yeah, the, the classic line, how do you turn down a junior mint? It's chocolate. It's peppermint. It's delicious. And, and Jerry says, that's true. It's very refreshing. Classic, classic line. Number 31, the yada yada from season eight. George's new girlfriend often fills in her stories with the expression yada yada, leaving out much of the detail. Jerry tells him she's being concise, but knowing what's going on drives, not, no, not knowing what's going on drives George crazy. Jerry is convinced that his dentist, Tim Watley, has converted Ju Judaism just so he can tell Jewish jokes. And uh, Jerry gets called an anti-dentite. Elaine is asked by his by friends to be a character reference with an adoption agency, and that doesn't exactly help. And Kramer and Mickey can't agree on which of the two women they've met they'd like to date. This is known, this is the classic thing, the yada yada. They did not invent yada yada, but they definitely did make it a lot more popular. Uh, the great line is when Elaine says she yada yada through sex. Uh, she said, uh, he said someone bought her a lobster bisque, yada yada. And, uh, and someone says, but you yada yada over the best part. And Elaine says, no, I mentioned the bisque. Love how she delivers that. Uh, the, the Tim Watley thing of, of converting the Judies for the jokes. At one point, he says, Jerry, it's our sense of humor that's a saint that has sustained us for as a people for over 3,000 years. And Jerry says, 5,000. 5,000, even better. And he says, Christy, give me a shtickle of fluoride. Um, <laughs> did you hear the one about the rabbi and the farmer's daughter? And then... <laughs> Did you hear the one about the Pope and Raquel Welch on the lifeboat? Those aren't buoys. Classic, classic. Um, at one point, George's girlfriend says, uh, speaking of exes, my old boyfriend came over last night and yada, 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 yada. Anyway, I'm really tired today. She totally had sex with him, right? <laughs> I think so. Um uh, yeah, there's there's a lot there's there's a the, when there's a great thing when um Jerry goes to uh he goes to confessional at the Catholic Church to tell on Watley and uh and 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 the, the priest says, Tell me your sins, my son. And Jerry says, Well, I should tell you that I'm Jewish. And the priest is like, That's no sin. Uh, but he says, I have a suspicion that he's converted to Judaism just for the jokes. And the priest says, And this offends you as a Jewish person? No, it offends me as a comedian. Good, good. Uh, you know the, the you know what the difference between a dentist and a sadist is, don't you? Newer magazines, which apparently is that 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 gets them labeled an anti dentite. And Kramer says, "Next thing you know, you should be you're saying they should have their own schools. They do have their own schools." Number thirty, the alternate side from season three. Jerry has his car stolen and even speaks to the thief. He tries to run a replacement, but learns that it isn't quite simple as it should as it would be. George is intrigued to learn that there's a man in Jerry's neighborhood who earns a living by parking everyone's car and moving them when required. And George thinks he can do that. Everyone is a bit jealous when Kramer gets a one, one line speaking part in Woody Allen's new movie. And Elaine dates an old guy that has a stroke. A lot of classic stuff here. Basically, two main classic things. The first is. These pretzels are making me thirsty. Classic, classic line. Uh, but also the, the uh, scene where Jerry goes to rent a car and they tell him that they don't have a car for him. 
and the classic the classic line which is see you know how to take the reservation you just don't know how to hold the reservation and that's really the most important part of the reservation the holding anyone could just take them so and, and they it, and she says she's going to go talk to the manager and uh Jaren and Lane are saying, "Oh, she's on. She's she's just pretending to have a conversation, which is which is true. I I, I believe that that's actually what happens. They just pretend to talk and not not really say anything. Uh, but but she comes back and she says, we have a blue Ford Escort for you, Mr. Seinfeld. Would you like insurance?' And Jerry says, "Yeah, you better give me insurance because I'm going to beat the hell out of this car. Uh, but." But the, the the worst thing, this is another, this is actually, I think what, what the actors have said is like one of the worst things they've done in, in, in the whole series is the old, the, the old boyfriend of Elaine's, she was just about to break up with him, but he has a stroke and, and she's carrying, she's, she's in Jerry's apartment and they can't call, uh, the am they call an ambulance, but the ambulance doesn't come because of the, all the, all the, the movie and the George stuff. But um, yeah, the, the guy having a stroke, everything involving with that, that is ugh, not, uh, not a fan, not a fan. Number 29, the comeback from season eight. George gets insulted by a coworker named Riley during a business meeting with the line, hey, George, the ocean called him to run out of shrimp. He plans to get back to, at him with the jerk store comment, with all, which all his friends try to change. Jerry buys a new tennis racket from Milos, and Milos is actually a lousy player. And there's something with the with the with his wife and sexual payola or something like that. I don't know. So there is that. There is also uh, Elaine is renting vi videos from Vincent's Picks and develops a falls in love with Vincent, even though Vincent is a 15 year old boy. And Kramer asks Elaine to be act as a witness to quote unquote, pull the plug if he ever goes into a coma because he watches a movie called The Other Side of Darkness. So obviously this is known as the the the, the one with the jerk store. Well the jerk store called and they're running out of you. Uh and then so so he goes he goes to use that line, but he finds out that the guy move, um, moved to the Akron and uh, for for Firestone or something like that. So he goes he travels to Akron just to use the line. By the way, that guy Riley, that was Gary from Old Town from from Cheers from Old Town Tavern. That's that's Gary. That's that's all I was thinking about. Anyway, uh, so so he goes all the way to Akron just so he could he, he could use that line. And he says, well, the drugstore called and they're running out of you. And he replies, well, what's the difference? You're their all-time bestseller. And George says, oh, yeah? Well, I had sex with your wife. And the guy comes up to him and says, his wife is in a coma. One of the best scenes in this whole series right there. Uh, yeah, the whole thing with, with, Vin, with, with Elaine and Vincent, that was, that was cute. Um, but 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 Jerry and Milos. By the way, another one. Milos ended up being the guy that was like the dean of the college uh, from Big Bang Theory. So weird that these <laughs> that these uh, it, it, he looks totally different too. But uh, yeah, that was that was silly. Apparently, when they filmed that, the uh, the tennis facility actually like flooded and actually almost hurt a lot of people because it, it rained really bad. So anyway, that was number 29, number 28, the implants from season four, Jerry can't help but wonder if his gorgeous new girlfriend, Sidra's breasts are real or implants. Elaine tells him she's sure they're fake and then decides not to see her again. And then an encounter in the sauna leads her to think otherwise. George must attend an out of town funeral and does his best to get a discount on the airfare. Then and they wake the mourner catches him double dipping. Um, Kramer saw Salman Rushdie at the he health club. Uh, this is, you know, they're all, they're all in a sauna, uh, Jerry, George and Kramer. And Kramer says, it's like a sauna in here. I, I always say that not that I'm in saunas that much, but still that's, that's another classic line, but this is known for two things. The double dipped, uh, where where Timmy says, "You dipped a chip, you took a bite, and you dipped again." That's like putting the whole mouth right in the dip. Yeah, don't double dip. That's disgusting. 
uh, and also for Sidra saying at the end, which was an ad libbed by line, by the way. Uh, she said, and by the way, they're real and they're spectacular. Um, uh, there's also a good line where where Kramer asks to borrow Jerry's bathing suit. Ew. And and Jerry says, I don't know my bathing suit. That's a little familiar. I don't want your boys down there. And Kramer says, what's wrong with my boys? And Jerry says, your boys should stay in their own neighborhood. Right. Number 27, the notes from season three. Elaine and George are fascinated to learn that a massage from a physical therapist can be claimed on health insurance if they have a doctor's notes. Jerry offers again his dentist friend to provide a note for them. Uh, Jerry has his own problems with the masseuse who now fears he's a child molester. And Kramer saw Joe DiMaggio at Thinky Donuts. Um, this is the, I believe this is the first episode of season three. And they did this thing at the end, at, at the beginning, um, where it's, you know, you have the, the, the regular um, Seinfeld theme. Doom, 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 doom. But they had this, I think they just did this for one episode because it was so horrible. It was just every once in a while you hear, hey, like a choir of women say, hey. Da, da, da. It was horrible. Absolutely horrible. It was, it was, I was, apparently that was Jerry's idea. And the network told him, hey, cut, don't do that. <laughs> uh, but this is known for the classic scene where George is getting the, the massage from Raymond. And then he tells Jerry about it. He says, I think it moved. I don't know. It moved. It was imperceptible, but I felt it. And, and Jerry says, maybe he just wanted to change positions, you know, shift the other side. No, no, no. It wasn't a shift. I've shifted. This was a move. Classic, classic, classic scene. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Kramer saw Joe DiMaggio at Dinky Donuts, and and uh, and he's 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 banging the table, yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, he said, That's how he played. That's like he's he that's how he played baseball, he dunks like he hits. Number 26, The Stall from season five. Elaine has a problem when she goes to the bathroom at a movie theater and what realizes too late there's no toilet paper. She asks the woman in the next stall for some toilet paper, but the woman refuses. So we know, we know about that. Kramer has taken a liking to phone sex, but the voice on the other hand on the line is oddly familiar. And George becomes friends with Elaine's new boyfriend, Tony, who is a mimbo. Okay, this is this is known for the classic line. Can you spare a square? I don't have a I don't have a square to spare. I mean, who is? Have you ever been approached by anybody who says, "Hey, can I borrow some toilet paper?" Like I, I I don't know, but still, you know, if someone's running out, I would give some. Like what, 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 what? Why not? Obviously, obviously, if you if you're completely out of toilet paper. You you need help. You're that's a, that's a dire situation. What, what do you do? There you have very few options, and none of them are good. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I don't know. Just 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 spare a square. Come on. Anyway, uh, so that that was that was the whole thing about yeah. The, the, can you spare a square? That's that's classic. Uh, the Mimbo Tony's uh Tony Elaine's boyfriend is played by Dan Cortez, who I believe is from Pittsburgh. He is great, great one-off character. Um, the way that George just has a crush on him is so funny. <laughs> he does everything. He tries to be totally like like uh, Tony. It's cool, uh, you know. At at, uh, at one point, Tony says, "Hey, dude, you better step off." And they 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 go rock climbing, but something happens, and then they let they let, they let go of the rope, and Tony's face gets all mangled in a lane. <laughs> Elaine is obviously in him just for, into him just for the looks, and she's freaking out that his face is all bandaged, and she's afraid he might be ugly or something like that. So, uh, but the, but the thing with with Kramer and Jerry and the 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 girlfriend, okay, this is super weird. Kramer goes to Jerry's apartment, asks to go into his bedroom, borrow his phone to have phone sex. What the hell is going on here? What? 
you you go to a friend's apartment and this is like one of those nine seven six lines that costs like who knows how much a, a minute or whatever to have phone sex that, this, this whole thing got glossed over but that's disgusting uh, but at the end she uh, he suspects that it's Jerry's girlfriend that's actually that he's been actually talking to on the phone sex line and he Jerry accuses her and she says oh of course not I didn't do that but at the end they find that it actually was her <laughs> great great line Number 25, the mango. Jerry gets a shocking revelation when Elaine reveals she faked every orgasm while they were dating. Jerry then pleads with Elaine to get a second chance in bed. Kramer turns George into onto the erotic pleasures of fruit, specifically the mango. Um, this is Kramer gets kicked out of, of the supermarket. Oh, because he tries to return bad fruit and the guy bans him. First life, and then, and then for some reason he bans Jerry for some st- stupid reason. But um, it, this is a very sexy episode. This is a, this is a lot, a lot of sex going on in this episode. Uh, George is worried that he is not satisfying his girlfriend, and at one point Jerry says, "Nobody knows what to do. You just close your eyes and hope for the best." They're really just happy if you make an effort. No comment. No comment. <laughs> um, but this is this is the episode. This is another one of the great scenes in in, in the, the whole series when she tells him he she faked it the whole time, and he says, "You faked it. I faked it. The whole thing, the whole production. It was all an act." She says, "Not bad, huh?" And he says, "What about the breathing, the panting, the moaning, the screaming? Fake, 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 fake." One of the one of the greatest of the entire. Uh, thing by the way mango is actually a natural aphrodisiac and is known as natural viagra so there you go i uh, you learn something new every day um in the end jerry obsesses with it he obsesses with it so much that it almost ends the friendship with elaine they return all their stuff and finally elaine says all right let's go let's let's <laughs> Let's, let's have sex we have to have sex to save the friendship and, and jerry says sex to save the friendship and then of course he doesn't even he it doesn't he, he doesn't even uh do it right so anyway but that is that is it for this part we the next one is numbers 24 through 11 and then the final one is the top 10 episodes oh boy we are we are so close uh we are i believe this is part nine so thanks for watching and listening see you later